King Charles takes on about 300 new patronages. Pat you say that word. Patronages. See, I, I struggle it's with that. It's a difficult one. one. It patronages. is. Patronages. Patronages. Can't get, say it quickly. That's can't get me to my trick. it. Anyway, you know what I mean. Anyway, some of which are thought to be very close to his mother's heart. Well, that's as critics fear that a royal row is ensuing over Prince Andrew's home, Royal Lodge in Windsor, which is in desperate need of repair, with some questioning whether he should indeed be living there at all. All right, let's talk to former butler to King Charles, Grant Harold, who joins us now from somewhere exotic, probably, because you always seem to be away somewhere exotic at the moment, Grant. <laughs> um, first and foremost, you're taking on these new roles... I don't know how much you have to do within each role, but it seems at a time... I'm a bit surprised he's done it at a time when his health is still obviously a little mm. bit fragile. Mm. Good morning to you both from Tokyo. Um, as you said, they have... You know, he's taken on these patronages. I think it's to show us all that even though he's obviously got these health battles that he's uh, obviously fighting cancer, but at the same time, as we know recently, he started to talk about increasing his engagements. And I think taking these on is very much to show the country, all of us, if not the world, that it's kind of almost, almost back to business as normal. Because as I've said before, he's somebody that does not like just to sit down and do nothing. So if anything, as soon as the doctors may have given him a bit of uh, obviously hope uh, that things are going well, he's decided that he wants to increase what he already does. Which doesn't surprise me because that's exactly the kind of character he is. As I said, he's not somebody that likes to just sit back and, and do nothing. It's a complete opposite. And I think that's why he's probably quite happy to be able to to do this. And again, it's it's things that were close to the late Queen, which he is obviously as now King, he's keen to continue a lot of her work. Mm. Should, should we talk about Prince Andrew? Because it's the front page of the Sunday Mirror this morning. Mm. Um, apparently, the estate at Royal Lodge in Windsor is in a state of disrepair. And there's questions about whether he should be living there at all. Mm. I mean, as you know, this this is a former home of the late Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. And of course, uh, he obviously has lived there for a few years. There's been debates in the past about whether he should have that property. It's quite a substantial size house. I think it's between eight and ten bedrooms. Obviously, it needs repairs done. I think it, it, it's regardless who's living there, the, the what would still have to be done to that property because, again, as one of the, the raw properties, it's it's somewhere that they've got to kind of look after and, and undertake its, its kind of care. Whether that's been paid for by, uh, let's say, the, the, the king or whether that's paid for by him, that's very much down to what the agreement is between them. All I know from a personal point of view, when I used to live in royal properties, that that was something that I would... depended on what, what had to be done. You know, if it's something that had to be done, then it was done by the estate. If it was something I wanted done, then I would do it. So that's what it comes down to. So if these are general kind of repairs that have to be done, then technically it's probably the estate that should... when it should be covering it. Um, can I ask you about, I mean, I don't know if, you, if you've, you've cottoned on to this on the other side of the world, Grant, as you are, um, but Republic, who obviously are not a fan of the royal family, um, they've declared the 5th of May um, National, how are they phrasing it, National Republic Day. First ever this mm -hmm. year. There's going to be a big event in Trafalgar Square, apparently. Um, what are we to make of that? I, I mean, it's... People have got a right, of course, to not like the royal family or to not like what the royal family stands for. Do you think there is a growing mm. appetite for that sort of thing or not? Do you know, it's, it's interesting, Stephen. I mean, you know, it's a free country. We're allowed to protest. We're allowed to kind of speak our mind. That's what's, that's what's great about our country. And there's people that love the royal family and there's people that don't. And there's also people, um, I'm actually on a, a, on a Queen Elizabeth ship and I've been talking to a lot of the guests while I've been here. And it was interesting. Some of them were saying to me they love a royal family, but they don't always agree with the way things are done. They don't agree with certain members of the family. So it's very much, can I say, a Marmite situation sometimes. But with, with Republic, of course, you know, they've got every right to kind of voice how they feel about it. There's obviously people that do feel strongly about it. But I always think... You know, if you, if you look at what the alternative is, you know, we are, I feel, personally, you know my views, I love our royal family. It was an ambition from a youngster to get to meet the late Queen, let alone work for the family. And, you know, we only, we've only got this one royal family, and if we got rid of them, then that's it. Then what makes us unique? I feel that our royal family does make us quite unique and special. And without going into it, you know, what it costs each of us is, is it's still very little in the big scheme of things.
Mm. And, and just very briefly, because I did want to end on some happier news, which is, of course, uh, the Royal Windsor Horse Show, uh, which was near Windsor Castle yesterday. We saw some beautiful pictures of the Duchess of Edinburgh, the Duke of Edinburgh mm. and their children yesterday, which was just wonderful to see. Absolutely. And again, they've taken on uh, other engagements, again, which the late Queen would have done. I'm sure you remember the late Queen loved to attend that. And of course, horses, animals were one of her greatest passions. So it's quite nice that obviously her, her son and, as you know, the, the Dutch of Edinburgh was somewhat very close to Lake Queen. It's quite nice to see mm -hmm. them both there uh, continuing to enjoy this with their children. And I'm sure remembering uh, his late mother at the same time. Grant, really good to see you this morning. Um, it looks like you're touring the world Thank on you. that lovely boat as a, a fitness guru. <laughs> What's going on? I, um... I, have to, I have to say, have you... you um... <laughs> Have you got a new health <laughs> regime? I, I've actually um, discovered uh, a personal trainer. So I've, I've ended up losing a little bit of weight and having a bit of a, a makeover. That's what happens when you're on a show. <laughs> you look great, Grant. You look really good. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> Thank good on you, you very much. Good to see you this morning. <laughs> Thank you.